Here we're going to use the surface volume method to calculate the volume of a stockpile. You can see in the drawing that I have a red 3D polyline and it's been snapped to some surveyed points and it represents the bottom edge of a stockpile and it also represents the ground from before some fill was added. And we can see also that there are some surveyed points on the surface of the stockpile and of course that's going to represent the surface after the earthwork has occurred. So we're going to go through the process of creating a bottom surface that consists just of the 3D polyline and it'll represent the ground from before and then we're going to create a top surface that consists of both the 3D polyline and all the surveyed points and that'll represent the ground after the fill. Okay, let's create two surfaces. We'll use extract to surface. Here I'm going to name my surface pick on OK, pick just that 3D polyline, and I hit enter. You can see in the command line that 103 points were derived from that polyline. Now I'm going to make another surface. This one I'm going to call top. And here I'm going to use everything that's in the drawing to create that surface. Window the whole thing in, and I pick enter. Now you can see 412 points are created from that surface. Now let's draw some tins to represent these surfaces. I'll select tin. Down in the command line it's prompting me to select, so I'll pick S and hit enter, and I'll select the surface that I want to draw a tin for, so I'll make it bottom. And then down in the command line, it's prompting me for display methods. And here I'm just going to hit S because I want to do a temporary show. There we go. That looks suitable. That re that's a flat surface and just represents the ground. Now let's repeat that. I'll tin. I'll select S for show. And let's ask for it to show us the top surface. Again, I'll show it. And there we can see that looks accurate. That's representing the surface of the stockpile. Now we have two surfaces in memory, and now we're ready to start doing some volume calculations. So here I'll go to surface volume. This opens up this dialog. And so now I'm going to select the two surfaces that I currently have in memory. And keep in mind that the rule of thumb for generating volumes reports is you select the newer surface and then the older surface. So top is my newer surface, then I'll check on here. Bottom is my older surface. That'll make fills be reported as positive values. And then I'm going to select cut and fill volumes as the method and for file output I'm setting none because then I'll get my result in the command line. Here I'll select OK. slide up my results. Now I can see that I have a positive volume of roughly 58,000, an almost zero negative volume, and the net volume which is the result of these two being subtracted from each other. Now let's do another surface volume calculation and we'll use the other method. So remember again newer is top, older is bottom, and here I'll ask for volumes and average values. Pick on OK. So now we have a slightly different type of volume report. First of all, take a look at the net volume. That value should, ma should match with the net value from the cut and fill volume report. But you also have two other numbers that are valuable for checking. You have the plan area, which represents the area inside of the red polyline and you have an average Z value. And these two numbers, when they're multiplied together, should equal this number here. These are good numbers for uh, checking using other methods to see if this number is valid and if this number is valid.
then when you're all finished, it's important to remember that when you've created a surface, that it won't necessarily be saved with the drawing until you go into the Surface Operations dialog, highlight both the surfaces that you want, and you can write a QSB file. And that can be saved and read in later on if you need to recreate those surfaces. Thanks for your interest in learning about the Surface Volume Method.